Yeah, hello, this is Cuckoo, and I'm right here uh, at Superbooth 2018 at Sinstrom Audible's booth with Ian here. Hey, hey. Hello, hey, I'm Ian from Sinstrom Audible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've got this really cool little box here. on pictures but in you know in person it's much slicker and slimmer than, than I expected yeah it's the first thing everybody says to us is that it's way smaller than they expected which I think it's just a classic case of nobody reading information on the internet you know when we first launched it we said it's 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 you know and uh, you know I, I people have seen photos of my video of my hands on top of it but you know I mean I, I thought the scale was obvious but still everyone's always like whoa that's way smaller than I thought yeah, I think we're used to seeing these wooden panels on Moog synthesizers and you kind of yeah, read the size into that. And, and, and also, I guess, you know, this uh, style with these pads, this sort of size, isn't that familiar? So some people thought they were NPC-sized pads yeah. and that it was just like a giant, like massive, even though, again, we said portable when yeah. we first put it out. Yeah. So I don't know how it would be portable. Yeah, but it is portable. It has a battery uh, and you can sample with it. It's a... It's a sampler, a sample player, backing track player. It's an arranger with a synth engine, which you can you know, manipulate the way you want. Uh, and CV, CV sequencer, yeah. What, it's a, I'd, I'd say like you're trying to make a, a jack of all trades machine. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's negative connotation with that. Everyone's like, you could, you know, master of none, you know, whatever. So it's like, you know, we, we don't look at it as that. We just try to like go, you know, can we get people away from their computer? Yeah. You know? And can we allow people to be creative in a way that they wouldn't have been before by giving them a new interface, you know? Um, yeah, we don't look, because, you know, we don't try to make it into a Swiss Army knife. We're just like, we do as much as we can. Um, yeah. But I've, I've seen a, a few videos of it online and they're all, you know, very different from each other. Uh, and, uh, and now you're re releasing a new firmware shortly with even more functionality. Like, Yeah, totally. I mean, um, this, this firmware is the result of, I guess, actually not only just listening to our customer base, but also like we've been looking at what other hardware sequences are like over the past sort of year, 18 months, and realizing that people are just dissatisfied in general with the lack of like actually in-depth song modes on pretty much all sequences like it seems to be the one common gripe that people always have so we we're like oh so initially we were going to do something quite basic and then we're like oh look actually let's take the opportunity to really think this through and come up with something that's going to like totally change people's approach to creating songs yeah yeah, yeah. well nice uh, and yeah you had like a, a sort of event uh, the other day with uh, featuring I mean, showcasing how it can be used in a live situation. And all of the performers play very differently. So because the synth engine is pretty open and uh, the sample, you can have long samples, short samples. Um, yeah, it sounded really different from each, each of every one of you. I think that's a good strength. I mean, I think, I think it's all up to the user. You know, there are some people who just don't want to spend any time developing the synth sounds. They just go in there and they'll use the presets. But those who spend some time in there and they'll like actually spend time working out exactly how they want the envelopes to be and, you know, like their, their volumes of the oscillators, you know, they, they sound amazing. It's like, you know, people who really like work on the FM engine as well. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's what my favorite thing is seeing different users' approaches to it. And one of our kind of key philosophies, I guess, as a brand is that we want people to sort of stop giving themselves roadblocks from playing live shows, you know, like they don't have to get more and more gear. It's like, no, it's time to just start playing some shows because shows are fun. So it's like, here's one device. And so I, I don't ask our users to send us like demos if we ask them to play a show. It's just like, yeah. man, come along and play, bring your SD card. And it's just like, play a set and so I had no idea what anyone was going to sound like but it was so I was like pleasantly surprised that everyone was awesome was yeah cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, and like speaking of that they just popped in an SD card on a clean device and then they were ready to go it's like just 
Yeah, yeah SD card is all, it memorizes everything. Totally, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It's important for us that the way people interface with the Deluge is pretty much the same on any Deluge, because it's like, you know, a lot of users kind of want that custom customization per device, but then that ruins that sort of beautiful thing of being able to go and play on anyone's Deluge and be able to immediately feel at home. So that was the kind of amazing thing about this SD kind of SD party, is that you just come along, plug in, and it, it's exactly as you want at home. It carries all your samples, all your song files, everything. And you know, like our users are starting to remix each other's songs as well. It's just like a tiny little file that's a few kilobytes. You can just email to anyone. They can load it up on their deluge and like remix someone else's stuff. Um, that's one of my favorite things about this community. You know. Very cool. And by the way, we hear, we've heard the proper pronunciation of this <laughs> name now, Deluge, Deluge. No, it, I, I don't know the proper pronunciation. So yeah, in, in New Zealand, the most famous band ever in New Zealand wrote a song where they said Deluge in a paper cup. So we're used to saying it that way, but then my French friends, when I first came to uh, Europe and were in France, they were like, oh no, it's Deluge. Uh, well, you know, said properly with a French accent. Yeah. I don't want to be racist and attempt that right now, but uh, so yeah. So I'm not quite sure how to say it. So, yeah. but but anyhow, it is from New Zealand. It's like you're just a team of two persons, right? Yeah. So well, it's it's a core team of two. So me, um, I'm the project manager and kind of look after sort of sales and communication and that kind of thing. And then Rowan, who's the developer, who just and looks after manufacturing. And so it's important that he just gets to spend as much time as he can on coding. He doesn't have to think about the business stuff. And so that's really, really key to, that's why we're able to roll out so many fast updates. You know, we really, that's a really key part of our um, relationship with our customers, you know, like, because they took a big gamble on us. You know, we didn't have a product and we said, look, you know, have faith in us, you know, commit to buying this. Four months time, we'll deliver, we'll deliver you a product, but we're going to keep on updating it. And you know, and they trusted us, and we're not going to let let down that trust. Um, and yeah, but we also have um, a team of people who build for us as well. So we uh, we assemble these in New Zealand as well. Uh, you know, we go really, really harsh quality control over every single device, and we build them ourselves. And we have like a team of people that we trained for a long time. And so the core, it's about maybe six or seven people that kind of work more or less for the company, with me and Rowan being full time, like. And since it's a battery powered unit, you also have like really strict strict laws on how to ship it. Exactly. I mean, yeah, because it has a lithium battery in it, it can't be on a shipment for more than, I think it's like four days or something. So, and ideally they have a target of three days for anywhere in the world. So our initial batch that we sent out, we didn't actually ship with the battery installed because we found it quite hard to find anyone who would ship it with a lithium battery. So we had to ask users, we'd send them a battery separately. So sometimes they got their battery like a month before the deluge, which is like, I can admit that must be painful. Like it's just sitting there waiting for your deluge to arrive. But um, and then they'd have to install it, which is really easy. It's just six, we, we didn't want to make it tough. It's the, it's the stock standard, uh, is it 18650 or 16, it's a standard like vape battery. You know, you can buy them anywhere and it's just six screws to like take the back off and replace it. Um, I've been using my battery for about two years and I still haven't replaced it and it's still got like a six hour charge. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, so it's going pretty well. Yeah. Let's uh, let's see what we could do. I mean, uh, you got three three different units here, and one of them is running the the yeah, a beta of the. Is it a beta? Alpha? Pre-beta? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's definitely an alpha status right now. The only people who have been checking it are basically uh, really close people with the company and like our employees and stuff. So that'll that'll be going to beta in about two weeks, and the beta process we find usually takes about a month. So sometimes faster. Um, so we're definitely looking at getting this out in about June. Um, so yeah, so currently I won't really show too much on the alpha version because it's yeah. super prone uh, to crashing. So, but we've got our stable uh, 1.4 update on these other ones as well. Okay, yeah. So I, I might just show like a little bit of the Arranger. So yeah, yeah, that's really, really, yeah, really amazing. So um, a a as you would have seen uh, when it was playing, um, the cursor stays still and your tracks, which are now represented on this timeline, roll by and obviously each instrument starts playing and your head hits the cursor. You can move where the cursor is. Now, one of our favorite uh, implementations of this and something that was really important to us because me and Rowan are very performance based, like we're not the kind of people who would actually just set up the deluge and let it run all the way through. So we wanted it to be a performance aspect to this. Yeah. What we've done is we've made it that you can flick between the ca the classic, the, well the new uh, timeline mode and the classic like uh, loop mode very, very easily. So when you, as soon as you pull this into focus, it now turns this into uh, the loop player again. 
Um, and so, unfortunately, th these are quite long loops, so it's taking a while before it actually, like... So as you can see here, I'll, I'll force that one to start playing earlier. So I've now just turned it into a loop-based jamming thing. I can do whatever my thing is. And then when I want to go back into that timeline view again, I can just simply press on song. And then the most awesome thing about it is I can just choose where I want the timeline to kick back in again. So say I want it to bring in just for this drop here. I can find that, press play. It will now wait till the end of that current loop that's playing, which is going to be a little while on this. And then when it hits the end of that loop, it will kick right back in here again. Like that. And so you can just keep on doing that, going back into the loop view, back into the arranger view. Um, and now, w when you're in the arranger view as well, you also have full control over the mutes. So you can like mute tracks which are playing. And you can apply uh, effects on each individual row as well by holding down this. And then suddenly your parameters become available to you. So I could like throw some delay. on that row there, or I can actually affect the entire track with Affect Entire. Uh, so, yeah, nice. so that's some of the kind of performance uh, features of it. So I'll show you quickly actually, you know, it's, it's obviously, I mean looking at it, it's very clear how you actually construct a track, um, but I'll just show you, so when you, when you, when you have a particular instrument um, chosen, so you can implement each individual loop manually like this, or you can actually just hold down the head and then when you want that loop to finish. And you can zoom out to go further apart. And now, as well, normally when you place an instance like this, what it will do is it will reference to the original loop and it will play exactly that. But if you want to have a unique instance that's only on the arranger, all you need to do is hold down shift and then push on that one. And then you see how it's now gone white? That means it's unique just to the arranger. So I'll push down on that and then anything I do here is only on this one instance. And now, if you really like that unique part, you can actually drag that back into your loop view by holding down on that and then pressing song, and now you've got it in your loops and you can just jam on that and have a bit of fun as well. So that's one of my favorite things uh, about this, which I wanted to show. Yeah, as you can see, this is a really powerful arranger mode where you can build songs just as long as you like and, uh, yeah. so, and, and I, I, I saved the best till last so for those people who are kind of like me who don't like programming and they're more into live performance so this may not be in 2.0 we're hoping it will but otherwise it will definitely be in the next release you can just go into your loop view and do your performance using your unmutes doing your parameter tweaks and you can record that that when you then go into the arranger view it's just got your performance recorded in straight away so do a five minute performance once and you've set that arrangement up for life. And then if you made any mistakes in your performance, just go into the arranger, move things, move things to the side, you know, go in there, make things shorter, add little fills. Boom. <laughs> Can't believe I just said boom. It's like Steve Jobs, boom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can also bounce all of this audio to the SD card. Yeah, totally. So at any time you can just hit record and play and it will uh, record, it'll, it, it starts playing, and when I press record and play again, it, uh, it'll finish perfectly on the end of that loop. So you can then immediately load that up into a kit underneath, so you can resample whatever you've got. Um, okay, obviously I, I pressed record, that was going to wait till the very end of that song, so. Yeah. But can you, can you uh, a, power, a power question here, can you record the, the arrangement and the audio at the same time? We, we haven't actually implemented the new recording of the arrangement, but I mean, um, I'm not actually sure what Rowan has planned, but, uh, but I assume now that you've put that out there, oh God, we kind of have to now. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I have no idea if that's difficult. I mean, um, I mean, what I would do is I'd probably just record an advice, yeah, yeah. line that and record that audio and record the arrangement on there, but hey, I don't make the code. <laughs> yeah, well, cool, cool. I'm, I'm very interested to hear what the synth engine sounds like and, and the sa how do you mani manipulate the different sounds and yeah. All right, well, um, okay, let's just go on to here. So one of our, also one of the new features coming in our 2.0 updates is um, a new filter uh, that's like a kind of uh, an emulation of like a classic kind of analog ladder filter. So I'll play you just quickly um, the current. Uh, so these are pres presets? Yeah, oh, they, no, they, they, these are actually songs. Oh, so okay. I'm wow. gonna load, um, so this is actually just, this is our current classic kind of um, just preset uh, with not much going on. And now there's like a keyboard mode. 
Yeah, yeah, so this is like a live playable instrument, and the notes that are lit up are the ones that are currently in the scale. You can flick through those scales, and also you can uh, have your own custom scales as well. So that's the current kind of filter. So our new one, I'll just play you like a demo of that. So this is uh, what's called a drive filter. So you see it's much smoother, particularly on that sweep there. It's all... Oh yeah. It's also got much more of that growl. I'll, um, I'll, I'll put an app on that. So um, that's uh, our new drive filter and uh, changing it is as simple as just uh, you can choose between the 12 or the 24 dB which are the current filters on there or just click this down once and now you're on the drive. And uh, the, the, there was a lot of time spent working on it that it wouldn't utilise uh, any more additional CPU uh, which was like actually one of the bigger ta biggest tasks that Rowan worked on so, it, so people can use that at no expense of voices or anything else. So. And speaking of CPU. Uh, you can really max this thing out with, with a lot of tracks and you don't really have an upper limit of how many tracks you use, right? No, so I mean um, definitely what was important to us is we couldn't understand uh, arbitrary limits on anything. I guess, I mean most manufacturers don't ever want their device sounding crap and so I kind of get it, they're like, oh you know you can only have this many tracks, limit the BPM to like 80 to 400 or whatever, you know only a maximum amount of voices. We're just like going, oh, if you want to make it sound crap, you're, you're welcome to. If it's like, you know, because the thing is we also come from like an improvisational music scene so it's like the people who, who are using this device want to play it at 1 BPM or 10,000 BPM or they want to have like just crazy delay going on that's like ridiculously big and like starts chopping up and breaking up and just turn to static you know it's like so we're like if you want to do that you know all power to you so with tracks you can simply have as many tracks as you like and they can be as long as you like if you want to have a track that's like 10,000 bars long you can or if you want to have a track that's like one step at you know 64th notes you can and you can have them running uh, simultaneously so do whatever you like have a hundred tracks preloaded and have 20 of them going I mean obviously it depends on how complex those voices are how many samples are going you can use up to 64 unaffected samples at any one time and generally 64 kind of like simple synth voices but obviously when you start like bringing in like lots of voices start getting really complex on them it starts using a little bit more CPU but it's still pretty nuts what you can do with this and especially now in this 2.0 we've now allowed you to do way more. So, because uh, in our 1.2 uh, update, we made it that all samples stream from the SD card. So once we did that, we effectively rendered the 64 meg of RAM pretty much like it wasn't doing anything. So we've now made that uh, access, so you can, do, you can do a lot more, basically. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly show you um, how you can use this as a stems player, because this is actually sort of one of my favorite um, Yeah, I was just gonna ask you about that. Uses of it. So. This is um, a whole bunch of stems. Uh, I'll just zoom out a little wee bit. So this is like all sort of uh, four minute stereo uh, waves and we've got something like 15, 20 of them. And so once you've got these loaded, you can just mute them and unmute them as you want. You can color code however you like. So that top one there, that was the main vocal. We can just... So you can like remix your own tracks. Would you treat me the same way? Now we are gone and you're only And if you zoom even more out, you can see where the difference. Yeah, they have like slightly different things. Exactly, and so and you can also uh, do all your parameter tweaking on here as well. So I can just like throw some delay on that vocal. some kind of crazy effects. Drop those drums. It's just a really nice way of remixing your own stuff. Uh, you know, and as well because you can also run uh, 
any instrument you like through the line in. You know, you could run a mic through that, you know, and then record your own vocal, have your own vocal going over the top of that, put reverb and a bit of delay on your vocal as well. So you can actually have your own backing tracks and you can run a guitar through there if you want. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think one thing that strikes me when I tried it and when I see you work with it is it seems really, really responsive. There is no loading whatsoever. Everything is instantaneous. So that, that was one of the most intense things about really like uh, making that RAM work was that you can have this many samples being this long loaded in and then just like load up a new track and it's just like instantly you have like another 64 samples ready to go and there's no lag, there's no delay. And it's like, that's actually like crazy when you think about it. Yeah. That. It's like pretty nuts. But nice. Um, yeah, so what, what, what would you like me to show you now? I might switch to one of uh, yeah, the stable one. <laughs> yeah, is there something else you you want to highlight? Um, I mean, the machine's too deep. It's like I always struggle with this. It's like I, like, I'm really interested in, in how the synth engine works, and I know it's a bit daunting, perhaps, but I want I want to take a look at the the labels on there and the, a bit of the synth engine, if you can. So th this, this, this is one of our overlays, and so this is a little bit tatty because I've been carrying this around in my backpack, but I wonder if that's going to make things a bit clearer. Could you hold the mic? Sorry. So this is like a little overlay that if, um, if customers want to get a deluge without any printing on the actual body itself, they can instead choose to get um, this little magnetic overlay which has all the shortcuts on as well. Or sometimes for, for old men such as myself, uh, you know, it's just a little bit clearer because the text is suddenly white so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and you know, that just peels off easily. This is one of our original prototype uh, overlays that I've had for like a very long time now so it's kind of like getting a little wee bit ratty but still not bad. Yeah. So how would you go about if you started a new uh, a new patch with the scene? So I am the worst person to ask about this. That's so why I'm asking yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right I have no knowledge about synthesis at all right I just know how to uh, uh, bring the party. Yeah, but just just to get a like a rough idea. So if, if you want to start a brand new synth from scratch, you can just go all down Shift and U, and uh, now you can go and you can choose your um, your oscillator types. You can choose from square, saw, sine, triangle. You can choose from a sample. If you want to make a sample as the basis for the oscillator, you can do so as well. You can then choose using a line-in source. So actually, I'll, I'll show sample. Uh, quickly yeah. as well. So once you've chosen that, we can then go into browse, and we can then browse through your SD card, find something which might make it interesting. Let's just choose that, and now. So we've now got that sample as our oscillator. So you can actually do. You can have a second um, oscillator. So say our oscillator two. Let's change that to a sample as well. Uh, we'll go browse. This, uh, I don't know how is this going to sound. So, awesome. Yeah, so we, we can set the volume of uh, our oscillator 2 is here. Uh, you know, set the, set the transpose. Um, you know, noise on either oscillator. Uh, You've got your ADSR right here, so attack, decay, sustain, release. Yeah. An insane patching matrix where I can also patch the ADSR to LFOs, or I can patch uh, my saturation or my frequency or resonance. I can patch that to LFOs, or I can patch them to random. I can patch the transpose uh, to a random or other modulation source. Yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot of depth here. Um, Cool, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, eager to try it out. Actually, to sit down and take my time to to really try it out. That one thing that I find is interesting is open open synth engine with with patch matrixes. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, like I think we've tried to design this in a way that as soon as you start using it and you understand how we've made the workflow, that everything is just simple to go from there. So it's like, you know, our first, when we launched this in October 2016, I got a, a party together where I invited 20 people who had never ever seen it before, well, because that never been existed before. Ten of those had never made music before. So they were just my friends in the music industry, like managers, uh, 
reporters, and then so we gave them two hours each with the deluge, having never seen it before. We gave them a five minute introduction, and then they had to perform a five minute song that night at our release party. And everyone was awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I tested this on, like, my product development was on my, like, cousins who were, like, under 10. And so, like, I kind of gave it to them, and I was, like, going, here's how you, this is a piano roll. It sounds lower when you play there, it sounds higher when you play here, and then this is the drum. If you play it like there, that's a four on the floor, and then just go, just, just have fun. And like, man, like all my cousins and yeah, my nephews, they're all like writing amazing songs real fast. So at that point, I knew like we're onto something, you know. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, as we can hear, uh, this gentleman is from New Zealand, uh, a long and way. yeah, baby, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finally getting the jet lag. Yeah, I, out. I finally got sleep last night. The jet lag has been insane, but oh man, I, I woke up at like 3 a.m. last night and I went, no, but I managed to get back to sleep within like 30 minutes. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but so if we want to order this, it's from your store, right? From your webpage. Yeah, yeah, straight. So currently, and certainly for the foreseeable future, we'll just be doing online sales through our website. Because the shipping's three days anywhere in the world, and currently uh, it's cheaper to buy online than it is than it would be if it was retailing. So um, 899 US plus shipping, uh, plus if you're in a country that has import taxes, you might have some import taxes as well. But you're welcome to email us and tell us where you're from, and we can like let you know how much those import taxes uh, will likely set you back. Uh, one thing I've been dying to ask you, it's totally irrelevant, <laughs> but what status does Flight of the Concord have in New Zealand? Are they like treated as a deity, uh, royal? I mean, the Flight of the Concords was actually the greatest thing to ever happen to being a New Zealander. Pre previous to Flight of the Concords, if I went uh, overseas, like particularly in America, everybody just called me Gandalf. That was all they thought of New Zealand was Lord of the Rings. So. <laughs> and like, and that's really embarrassing, like, because I'm not a big fan of Lord of the Rings. Like, I totally, like, I appreciate it, but it's like, if you were living in New Zealand in the 2000s, you soon learnt to not like Lord of the Rings. That's all we heard about. Whereas, like, Fly the Concords, I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. And, like, you know, I, I went and used to see their early shows when they were playing in small bars in Wellington. So yeah. Pentagon Big was like, so then everyone starts calling me, like, you know, uh, Jerome or, like, Brett or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's fine. I, I'm happy with that. Yeah, well, it's cool. Well, uh, yeah, the deluge, really cool. Deluge, deluge. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, you'll be seeing more of this in the future. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and good luck with the, the up, finishing the updates and uh, yeah, everything. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're, we'll actually. Well, I'll be in Europe uh, in about six weeks' time, I think. Once we've got that update out, I'll be coming here and doing a whole bunch of workshops and maybe a few like random performances, maybe a few more of those parties where our users just use their SD cards. So, if you want to play one of those parties and you get a deluge in the next like few weeks, you know, come along and play a party wherever. And hopefully, we'll be in America later in the year as well. So, just want to meet as many of our community as possible and have lots of fun parties. Cool. Yeah.